Hello, with me today I have Dominic Scriven, founder and chairman of Dragon Capital, the largest private investor in Vietnam. Hi Dominic, I know you're only in the UK for a short period of time, so thank you for joining me today. Um, now Vietnam, once among the poorest countries in the world, uh, and you were involved in the country long before its um, economic boom began. It's a long way from the University of Exeter where you studied. Uh, could you just give us a brief history of how you become so focused on Vietnam? Uh, my, my, my career has been investing. My first job was here with um, M&G in the city. Um, but I found myself in Hong Kong uh, working in the financial industry there and then, um, and then went to Hanoi University to learn Vietnamese, um, study the country. And, and it, I just sort of fell into um, the job of, of uh, getting together with some people and starting Dragon Capital in the early 90s. Now you currently run a couple of ETFs on the Ho Chi Minh Stock Exchange and a UK listed uh, Vale Trust and have around $6 billion under management in the country and across Southeast Asia. Now what's performance been like in 2022 and over the, the past year? Thank you. Well, you ask a couple of points there. So um, to, to be clear, yes, we, we do run a, a, about uh, just over six, six billion dollars and and it's entirely in Vietnam and entirely in the equity market of, of Vietnam. Um, the, 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 the biggest component of that is po possibly of interest to your to your stakeholders here is 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 the Vale Trust, uh, Vietnam Enterprise Investments Limited. So that that was launched um, 22 years ago. Uh, at a dollar a share, it's now around uh, twelve dollars fifty an AV per share. So that's uh, a, t a tw twenty year record of thirteen point three percent compounded, which which is I an indication of the sort of returns you can get in in developing in developing markets. How 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 have things um, fared this year? Well, it's got a, it's got a little bit weaker in the in the last week or two, um, largely I think over you know concerned over what's going on in china we don't quite see how that's going to um how that's going to unwind uh, and so some of the local investors have been a, a, bit, a bit nervous broadly speaking though vietnam's move towards emerging market status it becomes part of the um, emerging market indices and and um no less significant um is the um the growing involvement of vietnamese individual investors um, for the first time, really, learning about their markets, yeah. Are there any areas of specific interest within the Vietnamese economy that you're in investing in? What, what, what's your big area of interest at the moment? So that's a good question. Um, you know, look at it in comments. I mean, if, it, if Vietnam were in Europe, it's 100 million people. So if it were in Europe, it would be the, the, the largest country in Europe. It's, it's quite sizable, but it's next door to China, which is a billion and a half people, so it feels quite small. But what, you know, the key themes over, um, you know, several decades are, are Vietnam um, emerging as a manufacturing alternative to China. Uh, and that, there's various ways, you know, you could go back to Obama um, and his attempts in that area. You could go to Trump and his attempts in that area. Or, or you could look at what's going on now, frankly, the geopolitics under Biden and and, uh, and and influencing Europe and how we all uh, view, view China and the need to have this plus one in your supply chain. So that's a, a, a big driver, and that of course in turn is 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 bringing um, a, you know income growth, urbanization, industrialization to Vietnam. So we've got the growth of a middle class. So really, it's opening up and and um, providing products to the world and. Um, it's the um, growth of a um, urban uh, middle class demographic. Those are the two the two main things. There's sort of other things as well. But, so um, infrastructure, um, property development, industrial zones, um, financial services, um, you know, digital banking, uh, e-commerce growth. These are these are uh, the the main areas that we invest in. Yeah. yeah. So, so it sounds quite broad across the almost the entire economy. It is broad. We, we, we don't go outside Vietnam, but within Vietnam, we need to sort of know everything that's going on. Yeah. Of course. Um, so, I mean, the World Bank's described Vietnam as one of the most dynamic and emerging countries in, in East Asia. And you've previously predicted that Vien Vietnam will 
grow annual GDP uh, by over 7% in 2022. Um, do you still think that's the case? Uh, yes, well, one's predictions um, constantly need testing, don't they? Um, so the first quarter was 5%, sort of in line with expectations because because we're coming out of COVID, service sector just a bit slow, tourism not quite beginning to... to um, to, to, to impact. Uh, and we we are holding our 7%, 7.1% um, number for the year. At that sort of consensus, I saw JP Morgan came out with something similar um, yesterday. There is, of course, the possibility that it might actually be higher than that if um, Vietnam were to kick off on its fiscal program, COVID support program. I mean, you know, frankly, that's not really necessary right now, but it took them a bit of time to get through the process. So there's possibly another 1% if that would happen. But no, I think we'll stick with the 7%. Yeah. You mentioned a little bit earlier sort of some of the things that are driving the Vietnamese economy at the moment. Um, is, is there anything else that you, you'd like to add to that? I guess the sort of tourism is, is just coming back into sort of a... Yeah, tourism, absolutely. I mean, tourism is a, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in Southeast Asia, of course, Thailand is the country that we all know for tourism, and they have you know as many tourists as they do have people in one year, and so um, you know Thailand's been 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 quite hit, and everybody's looking to see how tourism recovers. But but tourism's big in Vietnam. Yeah, it's it's probably eight percent of GDP, and so we 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 are very keen to get that going. But I think if you're asking about um, you know major themes, there, there is one major theme. Um, that I that I would pick on at the moment, which is the um, it's this. I mean, we we talked about plus one, but it's it's the current lens um, of 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 geopolitics as as applied to international trade and investment with reference to China. So the flows of trade that are um, moving from. China to, to Vietnam, and bearing in mind this is only a hundred kilometers, of course, right? But they're moving, and in turn bringing um, flows of investment uh, to to build out facilities, and that in turn, of course, is bringing capital flows, which which influence the asset markets of Vietnam. So I think that's a you know, the, as we were saying, that the, the theme has been around, but it's it's very pronounced now it's very pronounced and and uh it's it's not um it's not necessarily something that any of the major players are are against i don't think china is is it's it's possibly a win-win type scenario so that that's that's probably the biggest theme at the moment in terms of trade export growth import growth yeah okay i mean is you, you talk about china i mean is confidence in in vietnam being affected by events elsewhere you talk about China and we've you know, seen lots of uh, um, you know, volatility there over the past few months and, and, and uh, weeks, months and years, really. So, um, and I'm also thinking of rising inflation, higher interest rates and borrowing costs, the war in Ukraine, a world food shortage. I mean, I could go on. Is, are, you, are any of these or all of these a, a concern for you as an investor in Vietnam? Yeah, please don't go on. There's enough. <laughs> enough isn't there for all of us to worry about it's it's um in many senses quite a, a, de a depressing set of uh uh factors out there but we've got we've got to we've got to like look at them one by one right so covid um you know no longer an issue in vietnam it's a bit like this country um you know fully vaccinated opened up etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know we move beyond that food and energy no, those are big ones, aren't they? Um, so Vietnam imports about a quarter of its, a, th a third of its energy, um, a quarter of its energy. So there is an exposure, but but the country is is of course it's a vast food food producer. So you know, in I mean, of course, um, you know, fine things like wine are imported, right? But um, but in terms of grains, so there we mean rice, and in terms of protein um vietnam is is more than self-sufficient so i think we, we we don't we don't have um vulnerability to the to the supply aspect um and hopefully some protection from the vicissitudes of the pricing um of these but um so we reckon inflation might get four percent because some of the other factors that are in this country and other you know 
we, we didn't have a huge monetary program in Vietnam and we didn't have a huge fiscal program in Vietnam. So, you know, those drivers to price pressures that we're seeing in the West don't exist in Vietnam. So we, we've got to navigate those um, commodity price issues. Um, so that that's the, the the outlook on on um, on, on prices on 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 warfare, uh, Lord. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to say on that. You know, Asia as a whole, if I can say that, is uh, is viewing the situation slightly differently from Europe. Um, it's f further away. The linkages are are less. Uh, the both the real economy linkages and also the you know the the, the, the geopolitical linkages are, are less so there's a sense of um, of life being a little bit insulated from the the, the horrors that we're seeing in this country yeah um, so that leaves one <laughs> one 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 last issue which is is uh, is what's going on in China um, you know specifically right now China trying to manage a zero COVID program, it's really difficult to understand how, how that's going to happen. But the stakes are quite big in China at the moment. So, um, you know, what we're not seeing anything in terms of border trade flows. We're not seeing anything of I immediate uh, concern, strangely, in, in, the, in the Vietnamese numbers. Um, uh, but we've got to keep our eye on that. So I think that's probably where we're, we're going to be focused in terms of, you know, risk assessment in the coming months. Staying on with, uh, with, with China, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, labour costs and, and Vietnam's competitiveness um, with China. China getting more expensive uh, to produce there or to manufacture there. Is that a benefit to Vietnam or uh, is the cost of manufacturing in Vietnam for overseas companies you know, getting higher now? No, v v very definitely. Um, I mean, if one talks to manufacturers, they'll, they'll, you know, and of course, they're not like financial investors like us, right? That, you know, if you're, if you're going to build a factory, you've got to be pretty damn sure that you're going to, you're making the right decision. So, so what do they think about? Well, first of all, probably they think about, you know, political stability, you know, and, and the legal system and is, you know, and you're going to, you know, t take your factory over, you know, those, are, those are a very severe set of issues. And then, and then you talk about costs. And so that's costs of energy and, and costs of living um, and costs of labor. Um, but to the extent that you focus on that, it, I mean, it's fair to focus on that because that's a sort of indicator of everything in the cost bucket. Um, and so Vietnamese costs are, are not high. No, I think they're maybe, Forty percent um, or fifty percent lower than than southern China. Um, so what does that mean? You know, the minimum wage per month in Vietnam is about uh, two hundred and fifty dollars a month per person. So it's not much, right? Um, and and therefore we, we we need to reflect, of course, that it's um, it's not just the cost. I mean, it's the stability the cost and then there's the ease of doing things you know can you bring stuff in the ports and out of the ports and and you know are people obstructing you doing your business um, and um, you know across those Vietnam scores quite high um, and I, I don't say that just because I live in Vietnam you, you know let, let's look at some measures um, exports are equivalent to 100% of GDP and imports are equivalent to 100% of GDP. That's a huge uh, degree of openness of the economy. I don't, I don't, there's certainly nowhere else in, in, in Asia that's open. And, and that's, that's an indication of the fact that people are, um, uh, you know, broadly speaking, uh, comfortable um, with, with the costs, but with the overall environment. And you get into subjective assessments there about, you know, quality. My suit is made in Vietnam. Uh, quality, I think you'll agree. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, look, I mean, do you have any words of wisdom for viewers wanting exposure to Vietnam? So Vietnam is, is all we do. So obviously we're a little bit biased, but, um, uh, you know, there's no question that, that um, this is an emerging market in the making of, of substance, of size, um, with, with sensible long-term management. Uh, these places are not are not for the short term 
you know, I mentioned, you know, our track record, I think, is, is, is not a bad one, over, but it's over 22 years. And so I think, you know, the, the, the long term is the thing to think about. Vietnam um, becoming, you know, uh, one of the most dominant economies in Southeast Asia. That's what we've got to look forward to. Dominic Scrim, founder and chairman of Dragon Capital, thank you very much for joining me today. And thank you for joining us. And you can find more videos from Interactive Investor on our YouTube channel. And be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.